welcome to the Practical NLP podcast with me, Andy Smith. Catch up on previous episodes at nlppod.com. This episode is designed to be useful for NLP trained therapists, but it might also be useful to other therapists working in other modes and coaches and even management consultants. So here we go. I occasionally dip into forums for NLP therapists and trainers on Facebook and elsewhere. The most common type of post I see there is along these lines. I'm not quite sure what to do with this client. Can you help? They then go on to give a very brief description of the client and their presenting issue and the techniques, it's always techniques, that they've tried so far that haven't worked. Then other forum members will make suggestions about what the therapist could do to help this client that they've never seen on the basis of the therapist's one paragraph description, which is all the information they have to go on. Now, I'm not claiming to be a super therapist, especially these days when I do much more corporate training and facilitation. And I have sometimes had clients in the past where I eventually ran out of ideas for what to do to help them. But I believe the therapist looking for help could only be asking this type of question if either A, they're looking at the problem rather than the person, and they believe that each problem has a specific technique that should always be used for that type of case, except of course this time it hasn't worked, or B, they have a favourite technique that they apply to every client as a matter of course. Incidentally, I heard that when John Grinder used to have his NLP students work with a guest client as part of their assessment, he would find out their favourite technique and or the one they were best at, and he told them they could use any intervention except that one. I used to think this was a bit harsh. Clearly, I was looking at it from the student's short-term point of view. Now, I think it's a great idea that encourages flexibility. So, and at the risk of telling well-trained NLP practitioners what they should know already, here is the answer I would give to any what should I do with this problem or client type question. It's the only bit of advice you will ever need for dealing with client problems if you choose to put it into practice. Please take as read the usual conditions for effective therapy, such as maintaining yourself in a positive state, rapport, paying attention to the client, and having the client's best interests at heart. Step one, elicit their strategy for having the problem. Find out how they're doing it, step by step. Step two, apply whatever interventions are suggested by the client's strategy at the point in the strategy where intervening will have the most positive effect for the least effort and disruption. If you've done step one properly, it will be obvious what interventions to use and where to apply them. I'm not saying this will always be easy. For exceptionally complex or well-defended cases, it may take a few sessions before the client is ready to open up enough to allow you to discover their strategy. But it is, in principle, that simple. And if your NLP practitioner course didn't cover strategy elicitation, perhaps you need to find a better and probably longer course. Or you could buy my ebook, Practical NLP 5 Strategies, from your Amazon Kindle store. That's it for this week's podcast. Remember, you can see the show notes for this episode at nlppod.com and you can download back episodes you may have missed from the online store at webstore.nlppod.com. See you next time.